Did you know that touch sensors have the ability to sense a human finger through thin surfaces due to capacitive coupling, making them a good alternative to push buttons? Today in this tutorial, we are going to interface 8042QT 1070 7 channel touch sensor over I squared C using STM32 WLE5 microcontroller, which is going to be programmed with Azure real time operation system to enhance multitasking. We are going to discuss the necessary packets exchanged to interface the sensor efficiently, making it possible to detect short click, hold pressed, press and release events. We have got a lot to cover today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before, with a lot of features. They also have open source communities and electronics boards and tools store. The link in the description. Alright, so here's the hardware that we are going to use along this tutorial. As you may have noticed here, I'm using the uh, Sensor Hub development board that we have designed together in the Altium Designer hardware design series. I'll put uh, a link to that uh, series in the video description so you can have a look at it and see all the hardware details that we are using here. So on this side, I have a touch sensor and it's actually connected over I squared C to the MCU that I have over here, it's the M32 WLE5 series, which uh, has a LoRaWAN connection capability. We'll discuss that in uh, the upcoming tutorials. So uh, this development board actually uh, is used for standalone and for demonstration purposes only. So I had to do a few modifications so I can interface it over, over I squared C. So here I have connected the mod pin to the VDD so it can report all the uh, touch uh, events uh, to the MCU and I can do some action. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, here I have this uh, touchpad. I actually have uh, copper pads inside this uh, 3D printed enclosure. And when pressing uh, on these pads, uh, an LED will be lighted up. Uh, as you can see, uh, I have the MCU programmed to do some action when an event is detected by this touch sensor. So the touch sensor has seven touch pads and they can be connected to any metal in order to detect a human touch event. So I have also Azure Artos running on the MCU in order to handle all the tasks. We will discuss that in more details in the firmware discussion session. So watch until the end. So as you can see, it can detect a touch event on the touch pad and I can even touch the pads of the sensor in order to trigger some event, as you can see over here. So I have uh, the board powered by uh, 5 volt, uh, and that's all related to the hardware here. I have my ST-Link connected over a single wire interface to the uh, MCU, so I can debug the MCU while programming. All right, so that's all related to the hardware. Let's jump into the I squared C interface and see all the packets that are being exchanged between the uh, touch sensor and the host MCU. All right, so here I have the I squared C uh, bus lines uh, connected to the logic analyzer, so I can read all the packets being transferred uh, from the host MCU that I'm using, uh, trying to read the uh, key state register of the uh, capacitive touch sensor that we are interfacing. And the channel three is connected to the change pin uh, of the uh, capacitive touch sensor. So let's have a look at the uh, pinout uh, of the sensor that we are interfacing. So here you can see that uh, it has the I squared C lines. So here you can see the serial data and uh, serial clock lines. And I have the uh, change pin. Uh, this pin will be pulled down once a change in the uh, key state register is detected. So this will help us to conduct a read operation only when a, a touch event uh, is detected. So here, of course, in my configuration, you may have noticed that uh, I have modified, as we have discussed, actually, uh, I have modified the mode uh, pin connection. So this is now pulled to ground. So I can communicate uh, with this sensor. 
All right, so now let's get back to the logic analyzer screen. So you can see that uh, continuous read operation is being uh, done. Of course, this is not uh, an appropriate approach because this is keeping the I squared C line uh, busy. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, I want to show you that uh, here, if we zoom into any of the uh, packets, first we see that we are uh, sending write operation. Actually, this is done in order to specify the register that we want to read. So first we are checking whether the IC is ready to uh, do some operation and yes, we get the acknowledgement and then we send the address of the register that we want to read with write uh, operation and it's three. We can see that in the data sheet of the sensor that we are using. So let me show you. Yes, so here in the key status register has the address three and here we can see all the bits that can be read. So it has seven channels and it's all read only register so here we send the address 3 and then after the write operation we're actually writing nothing but this is used to send the address uh, byte uh, we are conducting read operation uh, and this is returning us uh, value 0 because none of the touch channels are being triggered so uh, this is quite normal so let's repeat the analyzing process and now i will touch the uh, pins of the sensors and you can see that the change pin is being triggered indicating for a change in the k status uh, byte so now let's zoom to any uh, segment of these let's have a look at this one so here if we have a look uh, at the uh, key status register content we see that one bit is triggered and it's the uh, third bit uh, which indicates that key number two uh, has been triggered so let's have a look at the data sheet of the sensor. So here we can confirm that uh, this key uh, state has been changed because we are reading the value 4 from this register and this means that uh, only this bit uh, is active. Actually this sensor supports one single channel uh, touch at a time and uh, multiple touch event is not supported. Alright, so at this stage I have actually updated the code in order to interface the touch sensor uh, in a more efficient way. Uh, let me show you. So now when I press on any of the touch uh, channels, you will see that the read operation will be conducted only when the change pin state uh, changes. So you can see that uh, by doing so I can actually uh, detect long press event, uh, press event uh, and press and release. And by doing so, the I squared C line is available most of the time and used more efficiently. All right, so here's the firmware running on the STM32 microcontroller. Uh, first of all, let's jump into the pin configuration so we can see all the active peripherals and we can continue from there. Uh, so in order to be able to interface the uh, touch sensor, uh, we need to have the I squared C peripheral active. Uh, and you can see that I have the clock speed adjusted to 400 kilohertz and there's actually nothing special other than that uh, I have the uh, interrupt also activated but I'm not using I squared C interrupt uh, the important thing is to have external GPIO interrupt uh, and you can see that here I have configured the GPIO 12 to have external interrupt so I can monitor the sensor change pin that's going to be triggered once a touch event uh, is done. You will see here the LEDs that I'm using for uh, touch event indication. And of course I have the debug peripheral is also active, a single wire debug interface. Uh, so we can have a look at the clock configuration. Uh, I always prefer to use the maximum speed of the MCU that's uh, available. So here I have it uh, 48 megahertz. And this time I've actually wanted to try the Azure Artos that uh, STM uh, provides. So here all you need uh, is to activate uh, this uh, option. And here you can specify the memory that is allowed to be used by the uh, real operation system. Apart from that, of course, you can select the memory allocation uh, method, whether it's uh, static or dynamic. I prefer to go with static, it's easier to handle. In the thread X uh, segment, here we can see all the configurations that can be done for the uh, read operation system that we have. Uh, it's actually quite similar to uh, FreeRTOS uh, if you have used it before. Uh, here we can see, so let me extend that. 
So here we can see notify callback, uh, thread uh, resume and suspend capability. Uh, actually, the difference here is that uh, in the Azure Artos, uh, the task is called uh, thread. So there's no bigger difference, only a few naming uh, stuff. Yeah, actually, there is a document explaining all these parameters. Uh, the good thing here is that the integration of the Artos in the firmware is quite easy thanks to this user interface. Uh, so now let's get back to our code and carry on from there. Let's zoom in a bit to make things more visible. All right, so let's start now from the main. Uh, first of all, we have the HAL initialization, clock configuration, and the GPIO and I squared C initialization. These all, of course, are generated by the Cubimax. So there's nothing special. We have already discussed the pin configuration. Uh, so what's new here is that this is the uh, touch sensor uh, driver initialization. So here I'm passing the I squared C uh, functions, transmit, receive and the uh, change pin uh, read function so the driver can read the change pin in order to conduct a read operation depending on the state of this pin uh, and uh, of course i'm passing the get tick uh, function so so the driver can give me information whether the uh, press event is long press or just uh, click and release so here you will notice that i'm passing the uh, functions pointers to my handler so here's the uh, definition of my handler and all its members and here of course i have the register addresses uh, of the touch sensor i have all of them defined over here so by using this member i can reach uh, that specific address and do specific operations like uh, sensor reset and calibration Okay, so let's get back to the main. Uh, after the sensor handler initialization, you'll see that the uh, Azure uh, Artos uh, initialization function is done over here. Actually, every code written after that part won't be executed because uh, the real operation system will start operating right after starting the uh, kernel of it. When the Azure kernel starts, actually this function will be executed, the application uh, initialization. So this function is actually given as an empty function by the framework of the Azure Artos. Uh, and here I have added this uh, tasks creation. So uh, the Artos is going to run these two tasks. So for example, here we have the uh, task handler, task name, the task itself, the task function, here we see an entry uh, parameter that can be passed to the task. So here we see the uh, task uh, stack pointer and its size and other parameters. I will provide the uh, actual document to the Azure Artos so you can uh, do your research more deeply. So let's jump into the two tasks that are running in our uh, firmware. So here at the beginning you can see that I have created two semaphores. Uh, so uh, I'm creating semaphore in order to trigger this task. So the first semaphore is the GPIO and it's triggered uh, from the external interrupt. So this task will run only uh, when the interrupt is triggered. And we can see that in the interrupt uh, folder. It's over here. So here you can see that once GPIO 12 is triggered inside this interrupt callback that I have it in my main. I'm putting uh, the semaphore. So uh, when this semaphore is given, uh, this task uh, can run. Of course, the task execution will start right after uh, the interrupt uh, subroutine uh, is completed. So this does not run uh, inside the interrupt and the interrupt is actually defined uh, as rising edge and falling edge. We can see that in the uh, main, in the uh, GPIO initialization. So you can see here the interrupt mode is rising and falling. So I can get two interrupts uh, in one press event. Uh, so I can get the starting and ending press event. So let's get back to the uh, Arthos tasks which will actually uh, trigger the other uh, task so i can do continuous read operation uh, in the other one so here you can see the periodic read task which will uh, look at the uh, read semaphore the periodic read semaphore this will also 
conduct a continuous uh, read operation, which will actually give us information whether the press event uh, is long press or short press. Uh, so let's get into the case status read function, which is inside the main, and uh, this uh, actually using the uh, driver functions, we can see that in the callback function. So here we are reading the state uh, of the change pin, uh, and then uh, this state is passed to the event type handler which will actually decide whether uh, the event is a uh, release event or with whether it is uh, pressed or long pressed and of course the uh, read operation will continue as long as the uh, change pin state is zero so this will conduct register read operation in order to read the value inside the uh, key state register of the sensor. All right, so this is uh, how the whole system operates. I'll be sharing all the uh, materials related to this tutorial in my GitHub repository. So you can go to there and uh, see everything in details. You can check up the uh, sensor uh, library, maybe develop it and uh, work on it. This brings me to the end of this tutorial. If you have learned something new, Please like this video, share it among your friends, and tell them about useful electronics. See you in the upcoming tutorials, and bye bye.